guy and Dale from the Gnarly Pipes and this video is about the drones in particular what's called tone chamber on the drones. There seems to be a, a view that certain pipes have strong, I was told strong tone chambers and some pipes don't and whether of course there's any benefit whether you can actually hear the benefit is what's brought me into wanting to test this um, issue. But so, so, so what I've done is I've made up some pipes. These are these are direct replicas of um, um, one of the top five brands. I'm not going to name the brand because I don't want to. Bring brands into it again. It's, it's the process, it's the functionality that I'm interested in. But this is one of the top five brands, an exact copy. Now, all of these were actually machined on a, they were machined and line board on a metal lathe, so they're all the exact dimensions within a few thou of the name brand, you know, the name brand pipes that I've used. I used for two reasons. One, obviously the name brand, and they've won a lot. They've won a lot of band competitions. They've won a lot of solar competitions. And the other thing is that the that manufacturer uses two different methods. Now you see on these two models, the tenon. These are obviously tenors. The tenon diameter. Now that's the standard wooden diameter that he makes that his that he makes with his pipes. If they're silvered, that's the diameter they end up being. Obviously, they're going to be a bigger diameter because the silver takes up space. And that particular manufacturer does one size for his planes and another size for his silver. And where that makes a difference is the size of the hole, the tenon relief, or what some people are calling the tone chamber. So, obviously, for that to fit into that, the clearance is a certain size. For a larger tenon to fit into the top section, obviously it has to be bored a bigger diameter, which is the case. And that's what we've done. So how we see that is that this is a cutaway. Now the pale, that's the diameter for the tenon to slide in and, in and out and that's where your hemp would be in that section there on the front of that section and that would give you interference fit and the light colour that's the bore of the tenon and you can see through the colours you can see that there's a very slight difference in size between the bore and the tenon relief now if I put that back to where the hemp line would be that magical two millimetres of hemp showing that light section is then what is considered to be the tone chamber. What's well, called the tone chamber. Now to me it's a tenon relief, but it's called a tone chamber and we're told that it's quite magical in its abilities. So that's what I've set up set up to do. Now the first two examples we used were not very conclusive. So I made a third one where the tenon is double the thickness of silver. Therefore, the chamber, for, for, for want of another name, is obviously going to be a larger diameter again, bigger again than what that manufacturer would make. And I believe that by comparing the three and then looking at the extremes, the smallest to the largest, if there is a difference, we should notice it. Now, one thing is for sure is that because that section there is a larger diameter on this, that will alter the pitch. The extra capacity in there does alter, will alter the sound wave when we look at sound wave theory and that will alter the pitch. That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the tone. So in other words, if I set those two at the same pitch, can you tell the difference? Does one sound noticeably different? In other words, does the tone chamber actually work? Does it actually equate to 
something that can be heard. And to go one step further, after we've done that testing, I'll create the files and then people can decide themselves. I won't tell them which ones they're listening to, but I will create the files and people can decide themselves if there's a difference. And then just to confirm it, what we do is where we have that difference in diameter in this section here, what I do is for this section I turn up a sleeve. Now that sleeve is the exact amount that that time chamber would expand to. So by putting in that packer, I've effectively completely removed any time chamber and the tenon goes into the exact same part. Now I can measure that distance, so I know it's gone in the same amount, but you're just going to have to trust me and make one up yourself and test it yourself if you don't. So I can do that for all of them. For the smallest one, it's quite difficult, it's problematic because it's not much difference, as you can see here. I can do it, but it's a very small sliver, and it's unlikely that it's going to make much difference. However, on the largest diameter, if ever it's going to make a difference, that much material in or out will make a difference. Now, it will make a difference to pitch, there's no question whether it makes a difference to tone. Then to go one step further, you'll notice on the end of these, I haven't put in the bells on the end. I will, but I want to do the test without the bells, so for this section of pipe I've also made one with the bell bored into it and it'll have an end cap placed in it with different size holes in it that we'll use to see what difference it makes. So if there's no conclusive difference here, there's no point in doing it on the bell, but we will do it anyway, just to debunk the whole thing. Then we have one of these where the hole, the borehole at the top, is increased to the size of the tenon. In other words, no chamber all the way up. And then we'll see the results of that test. The one point that came out of all of this is that when we followed these off of the old design, and it's pre-war, it's, it's way back, it's first world war this is the well we're talking around that era anyway one of the top five makers at the time back then the pitch that they were playing was probably and maybe 450 concert a to 454 i think was the highest concert pitch they were playing back then so we are now taking something that was designed to play at say 450 and we're now bringing it up and we want to now play it at 485 it wasn't designed to play there. So we're having to alter that. And the only way we can really alter that is with the reed. And that's what's happening now with our synthetic reeds. We get some that work very well in some drones and don't work at all well in other drones. And the reason is because of the design of the drone. Once again, I've picked on a name brand drone, one that has won solo gold medals and band gold medals. So there's no discussion about the um, design. The design is fine. It's only about the, the basically the reads the pilots and if it is possible to detect a difference with or without the chamber. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it in this video. I'm going to do it in the next video but that's what I'm um, going to do and that's, I'm hoping that will then allow us to see exactly what goes on with this um, tone chamber. Now I've heard it explained in one forum as the sound of a unicorn farting. Now, I'm probably never going to see a unicorn, and even if I could find one, I'm not too sure how I'd record it farting. But in the absence of a unicorn, I'm going to rely on software. So I'm going to play all the sounds in audio, and then I'm going to also publish the results from the software the overtone software. I won't be naming the individual items, which one is which, but I will put all of the um, audio profiles, the visual profiles, the snapshots, I'll put them in a document and put them online, and I'll make the audio files available to people. Uh, if there's anybody who feels that this is unreasonable, it's unfair, it's not, um, it's not 
conduce it to the back of all. For whatever reason, you, you know, you can contact me. I've gone to a lot of trouble machining these up, so a little bit more trouble to to address some idiosyncrasy that I haven't thought about, or, or an example that I haven't thought about. I will be putting all of these in a set of pipes and playing them in a set of pipes. The only thing different between these is the external has not been finished. The bores are identical, the lengths are identical, and I picked on a brand where the tenon length was the absolute maximum length. So some of them are a lot shorter, some of the money go up to the second O-ring. And as you can see, I've O-ringed all of these, so all of them have got exactly the same interference fit. There's no discernible difference between them as far as the way they're manufactured or the way that they operate. So that'll be um, in, in my next video and hopefully we'll see some results that allow us to um, define um, the existence or value of the tone chamber. Thank you for watching.